In today's episode, we're diving into the biggest Starship breakthroughs of the week. With the 8th integrated flight test approaching, both booster and ship have successfully completed static fire tests, setting the stage for the next critical step, the wet dress rehearsal. Launch Pad B works are in full swing, and perhaps the most intriguing development of all is that SpaceX is running a unique test to gather data for the first ever Starship catch attempt. What are they testing? And how could this change Starship landings forever? Let's break it all down. The past week kicked off with a rollout of Super Heavy Booster 15, fully integrated with all 33 Raptor engines, to the launch site for critical static fire testing. Upon arrival, the launch tower arms carefully lifted the massive booster and precisely positioned it onto the orbital launch mount, securing it in place for pre-engine test preparations. On Sunday, February 9th, the booster successfully performed a full-duration static fire test, igniting all 33 Raptor engines for nearly 10 seconds while being firmly held on the launch mount. This test was a crucial step in verifying the booster's plumbing, valve operations, ignition systems, and overall engine performance before proceeding to an actual launch. Interestingly, after completing the static fire test, the booster carried out an unusual series of liquid oxygen dump tests. Over approximately 39 separate events, small amounts of liquid oxygen were released through different engines at various times. While SpaceX has not officially disclosed the purpose of these tests, several engineering explanations are possible. The lock stumps may have been conducted to validate engine valve functionality, assess pressure and flow dynamics, or simply purge residual propellant from the fuel lines to prevent unwanted reactions or system contamination. After the tests, the booster was lifted off the launch mount and placed on a transport stand for all back to the production site. Before lowering it, the arms raised the booster to the top hatch position to simulate the forces they would experience during an actual booster catch. This maneuver served as a structural test to verify that the post-flight 7 upgrades to the tower arms could withstand the dynamic loads expected during future catch attempts. The booster was then rolled back to the production site, moved into the mega bay, and placed on a processing stand. In the coming days the booster will undergo system checks, hardware installations, including the hot stage ring, structural inspections, plumbing and avionics verification, and other final integrations to prepare for the full-stack wet dress rehearsal and upcoming launch. Following the completion of engine installations and other preparatory work, Ship 34 was transported to the Massey's test site on Monday morning. On Tuesday evening, the vehicle underwent a long-duration static fire test, igniting all six Raptor engines for approximately 57 seconds, significantly longer than the typical 10-second duration for such tests. This extended static fire likely served multiple purposes. Primarily, it would allow engineers to validate recent modifications implemented after the Flight 7 anomaly. In that incident, a propellant leak in the cavity above the engine firewall led to a fire and subsequent explosion. The leak was suspected to have originated from the transfer tube responsible for delivering propellant from the tanks to the engines. By running the engines for a longer duration, SpaceX could assess whether the enhanced leak detection systems were effectively identifying any propellant seepage in real time. The test might have also validated improvements in fire suppression mechanisms, ensuring they could contain potential ignition sources before they escalated. Additionally, a longer burn would allow engineers to evaluate the upgraded venting capacity which is crucial for managing pressure build-ups that could otherwise lead to catastrophic failures. Beyond verifying these corrective actions, the one-minute test also provided valuable data on the thermal and structural behavior of the vehicle under extended thrust conditions. Engineers could monitor for any signs of thermal degradation, material fatigue, or structural stress that might not be evident in shorter tests. This data is essential for understanding how the spacecraft handles sustained engine operation and ensuring its readiness for future missions. In short, the prolonged static fire of Ship 34 was not just an engine test, it was a crucial step in confirming that the latest design improvements effectively mitigate past issues. Interestingly, at the end of the test, a distinct pop sound was heard from Ship 34, accompanied by a brief flash. While the exact cause remains unclear, it could be a minor issue, such as a valve closing slightly out of sync, the ignition of residual propellant, or a pressure relief event. Although Ship 34 and Booster 15 will be flight ready by the end of this month, as Elon Musk predicted after Flight 7, the actual launch date depends on the ongoing FAA investigation into the Flight 7 anomaly. As per standard protocol, SpaceX must address the FAA findings and implement any required design modifications, procedural changes, 
or additional safety measures before receiving clearance for Flight 8. The second orbital launch pad at Starbase has made significant strides over the past week, with major developments in both the launch tower and the flame trench. The cable reeving process has commenced to operationalize the tower's chopstick arms. This process involves threading steel cables from the draw work system through a series of pulleys and sheaves mounted on the tower, ultimately connecting them to the tower arm carriage to enable controlled vertical movement of the chopsticks. The two hydraulic actuators, responsible for controlling the opening and closing motion of the arms, have been delivered to the launch site and are currently being installed. Each actuator independently operates one of the arms, allowing for controlled articulation during rocket stacking and catch attempts. The full functionality of the arms will depend on the completion of other subsystems within the tower, including control and communication systems, hydraulic lines, and power distribution. Depending on how quickly these installations progress, initial movement tests of the chopsticks could take place in the near future. Meanwhile, construction of Pad B Flame Trench is advancing rapidly. Excavation is complete, and teams have begun pouring the blinding layer of concrete to create a stable, level foundation. The next phase involves placing rebar cages, which will integrate with the underground piles for added structural strength. Once in place, these cages will be encased in concrete, reinforcing the trench to withstand the extreme forces of Starship launch. Simultaneously, workers are installing pipelines and conduits for both propellant and electrical systems. Components required for the construction of side walls, the sliding work platform, the deluge system plumbing, and the booster quick disconnect grid are also arriving at the site. At the Sanchez site, work on the Pad B launch mount is progressing steadily. Based on the current construction pace, the mount system is expected to be fully assembled within the next two to three months. The flame deflector system is also taking shape, with teams currently installing the water spray channels. This double bucket flame diverter, positioned beneath the launch mount, is designed to redirect exhaust gases generated by the booster engines during ignition. When exhaust gases are diverted, water will be sprayed through small perforations in the pipes, effectively absorbing both heat and noise. This system is vital for protecting surrounding infrastructure from the extreme thermal and acoustic effects generated during launch. Once work on the flame trench is complete, the launch mount and flame diverter will be installed and integrated into the pad structure. Given the current pace of development, Pad B is on track to be fully operational by mid-2025. In a surprising development, Test Tank 16, delivered to Messi's more than a week ago, has now been outfitted with what appear to be structural segments of the Starship launch tower arms. Constructed with a five-ring forward section featuring integrated stringers and a four-ring aft section, Test Tank 16 incorporates design elements consistent with the latest Starship Block 2 vehicles. Previously, I speculated that Test Tank 16 had been rolled out primarily to evaluate aft section modifications implemented after the Flight 7 anomaly. However, the new configuration clearly indicates that the primary focus now is on simulating the catch forces that Starship will experience during mid-air recovery. The tower arm structural segments positioned around the test tank are connected via pistons and cables, forming a test rig. These components are configured to apply dynamic loads that replicate the sudden forces the arms would exert when engaging a descending vehicle. This arrangement allows engineers to analyze how these loads propagate through Starship structure, assess the resulting stresses and deformations during capture, and evaluate the vehicle's overall structural integrity. The test could help identify weak points on the ship that may require additional strengthening, while also evaluating the acceptable degree of structural flex. Additionally, it will provide data on whether the shock absorption mechanisms within the tower arms need further refinement to ensure a controlled and stable capture. If Flight 8 goes as planned, SpaceX intends to attempt the first Starship catch as early as Flight 9, featuring Starship 35. At a production site, teams have recently completed the stacking of Ship 35 inside Megabay 2. The next phases of assembly will involve installing the aft flaps, finalizing heat shield tile placement, and integrating electrical, hydraulic, and avionics systems, with the Raptor engines to be installed in the final stage. Ship 35 is set to fly on Flight 9, paired with Booster 16 which has already been fully stacked and is currently being prepared for cryogenic proof testing. Meanwhile, stacking operations for Booster 17 are progressing inside the Mega Bay. Teams completed the liquid oxygen tank section this past week by joining the already stacked ring sections with the aft section. At the same time, their ring sections for the methane tank have begun moving into the Mega Bay, signaling the start of its stacking process. Once both tank sections are fully ready, 
they will be joined to form the booster's primary structure. Following this, technicians will complete the installation of plumbing, avionics, and other essential systems, bringing Booster 17 closer to rollout and testing. Now, let's discuss the latest updates from the world of science and technology. NASA's Artemis program, aimed at returning astronauts to the moon, is facing significant challenges that have sparked renewed debate about its future. Boeing, the primary contractor for the Space Launch System rocket, has recently warned employees of potential layoffs, with approximately 400 positions at risk by April. This announcement comes as concerns grow over the SLS program's escalating costs and persistent delays. The rocket, which integrates components from the retired Space Shuttle program, was initially slated for its first launch by the end of 2016, but did not actually fly until late 2022. Each SLS launch is estimated to cost over $2 billion, raising concerns about its long-term financial viability, particularly when compared to reusable alternatives such as SpaceX's Starship. Adding to these concerns, NASA's Office of Inspector General recently identified quality control issues in Boeing's work on the exploration upper stage, an advanced upgrade planned for the Block 1B variant of SLS, set to debut with Artemis 4. These issues further fuel speculation about whether NASA will continue investing in SLS or shift toward commercial alternatives. Reports suggest that the Trump administration may propose ending the SLS program as part of its March 2025 budget proposal, triggering internal discussions within NASA and the White House about its future. Boeing's decision to issue layoff warnings indicates that company executives are preparing for such a possibility. If SLS were to be cancelled, NASA will increasingly rely on commercial launch providers like SpaceX and Blue Origin for Artemis missions. Despite these uncertainties, NASA has not officially announced any revisions to the Artemis program and continues preparations for Artemis II. The mission, which will send astronauts on a crewed lunar flyby, has encountered multiple delays. Initially planned for September 2024, it was first postponed to September 2025 and later pushed to April 2026 primarily due to delays in the Orion crew capsule's development. Stacking operations for the SLS rocket began last year inside the Kennedy Space Center's Vehicle Assembly Building, with solid rocket booster integration now in its final stages. Once completed, the core stage will be installed, followed by the stage adapter, upper stage, and finally, the Orion capsule. After assembly is finished, NASA will conduct a wet dress rehearsal to validate the rocket's readiness for launch. What do you think? Should NASA continue the Artemis program with the SLS rocket despite its high costs and technical challenges, or should they shift to commercial alternatives like Starship? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.